Hi everybody, it is October 16th, and today's story is called Wizard vs. Witch. Rashir slammed his staff into the ground, the vase sliding into the dirt as if it was soft sand. The stone at its top crackled with energy, and a barrier flashed into existence, just as jagged spines of ice crashed into it, splintering into tiny shards that glittered in the sunlight. He grunted and took a step backwards. The ice hadn't hit him physically, but the impact against his shield still hurt. He could see her now, the witch sitting just to the side of the path, her back against a few boulders, a cauldron frothed in front of her, mist pouring over the edges. An array of small sticks, stones, and bones were scattered about her, her casting runes. He couldn't see them clearly from how far away he was, but he knew that they would be blank, the previous enchantment in them used to conceal her from his vision. Had she been waiting for him? Rashir brought his hands together and then fanned them apart, mimicking the motion of a book opening. A ripping sound accompanied the motion, and as his hands moved apart, the pages of a book fanned between them. His hands dropped away, and an old and worn tome was left suspended in the air in front of him. The pages were a mess of confusion as words and symbols appeared, moved, and disappeared from them. It did not bother Rashir as he did not look at the book. The book, like his staff, was a focus for his power. He watched the witch warily. It was one thing to face a witch who was just beginning her castings, but it was another thing to face one who was already in the midst of casting. Her cauldron and runes were foci just like his staff and spellbook, but how they channeled magic was different. His foci were fast and reactionary. It was easy for him to switch tactics, whereas the cauldron required more time to cast, but was capable of managing more complex castings with less effort. Witches were also notorious for carrying enchanted objects that they could use in a pinch. Another aspect of the cauldron, allowing the caster to use small objects with cantrips of potentially frightening power. As her first casting had been ice, Rashir considered it likely that her continued castings would follow suit. His spellbook reacted to his thoughts, and the pages became filled with words of flame and images of burning destruction. He waited for her to act, ready to rip the words from his book and cast them at his adversary. She tossed something at him, and he was momentarily surprised as it ruptured into an onslaught of icy spines. These icicles weren't her casting. These were cantrips. Words of fire lifted off his spellbook as he lifted his hands and he cast forth a gout of flame. The fire burnt across the ground, racing towards the witch and turning the icicles into vapor. The flames reached the witch and crackled harmlessly around her, runes that were scattered on the ground in front of her. She had known he would react in such a way, and had cast a ring of fire protection. What else had she had time to prepare for with her runes? He wondered how long it would take to wear out her protection. The cauldron was rocking and trembling, slowly to start with, but becoming faster. Something reached upwards, an arm extending out of the mist that frothed outwards. It grabbed onto the rim and pulled itself out. Another arm, a head, shoulders, torso, legs. Some sort of hell beast that was all teeth and claw and spine. So this was her casting, a summoning. Rashir's thoughts scrambled. He didn't know what the best way to deal with a summoning was, and he didn't know what she had already invested into it. He needed to restrain it or else it would rip him to shreds. His thoughts flashed. Fire. Manacles. Chains. And his spellbook reacted. He lifted the image off of the pages and tied the burning image around the beast. It was like trying to mix oil into water, and his magic just slipped off. He tried stone, then ice, air. Nothing held on to the creature. His power kept sliding off of it. The monster advanced towards him. Its movements were slow and jerky. It must have been resisting the witch's control. He could use this to his advantage, as it was apparently as interested in ripping the witch from limb to limb as it was in doing so to him. The ground shook and a mound of earth moved, taking shape. He poured more power into it and a golem began to form. As the ground shook more, Rashir noticed the witch's casting runes trembling on the ground. Could he break her circle of protection? He had a plan, though it would be risky. He hoped that controlling the summoning was taking most, if not all, of the witch's concentration. He let the em energy that was shielding him dissipate from his staff and made it met tremors towards the witch's runes. He couldn't just rend the ground. The witch had placed precautions against that. But maybe the tremors could wear those precautions away. He left the new enchantment to do its work and returned his attention to his golem. The witch's control over her summoning was increasing and was advancing more smoothly towards Rashir. His golem responded to his thoughts and trundled towards the creature. 
Grasping its earthen hands together, the golem struck at the beast, knocking it backwards. His magic may not be able to affect the summoning directly, but it could still be attacked physically. The creature got up from where it had been knocked down to, its eyes narrowing in anger at the golem. Its head twisted to look at Rashir, as if forced by an invisible hand, and started advancing in his direction once more. The golem kicked it, knocking it to the ground again. It got up and continued its jerky advance towards Rashir, the witch forcing it to go after him when what it wanted to do was attack the golem. The golem picked the creature up and tossed it away from where Rashir stood. The creature hit the ground, and there was a cracking noise like the sound of bone breaking. It growled and leapt at the golem, its anger momentarily overtaking the witch's ability to control it. The creature bit and clawed at the golem, dirt crumbling away from its body with each hit. The golem clumsily reacted, attempting to grab the creature and throw it away. Rashir hated controlling golems. He was no good at it. Rashir was beginning to sweat from the strain of manipulating the golem and trying to piece it back together as the creature ripped it apart. He wasn't going to succeed this way with the witch and the creature now working in tandem to destroy his golem. The witch's magic was sustaining the creature like his was repairing his golem. He couldn't see any sign of injury or wound on the beast. He licked his lips nervously as genuine fear began to work its way into the corners of his mind. He needed a new plan. The golem grasped the creature and held on tightly to it. As the golem did this, Rashir let go of his control on the golem and let it fall to the ground, pinning the creature underneath it. He grabbed a staff and prepared to run, hoping that the creature would be trapped long enough that he could get far enough away. Just as the golem hit the ground, his staff released another tremor. The combined force was just enough that a small split in the ground occurred under one of the witch's runes, and it disappeared into the ground. The gap closed as the witch's precautions tried to keep the ground from splitting. Rashir wasn't even certain if that's what he actually saw, but he had to try. Fire raced through his mind, flashed across his spellbook, and then a whirling gout of flame appeared up around the witch's shield. He had seen rakes, and there was a crack in her protection. It was enough for his magic to slide in. She screamed as the fire seared her flesh. Just as quickly as the fire appeared, it was gone, and the witch's casting was broken. He waited, worried the creature was still trapped into the remains of his golem, but with the casting broken, it returned to wherever it had come from. Rashir closed his spellbook, and it disappeared into nothing. He pulled his staff out of the ground and walked over to where the witch was lying. He was still wary, not certain if she was dead or not. He didn't know what kinds of enchanted objects she might still be holding. Her cauldron had fallen and rolled to one side, and Rashir scattered her runes with his foot as he walked past them, just to make certain that their magic was broken. He looked down at the witch and breathed a sigh of relief. She was dead, though he hadn't wanted to kill her. Now if only knew, if only he knew why she had attacked him.